Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last couple of sessions, we have been studying about decoder expansion procedures. Now in this session, we will learn what impact do they have on the architecture of ROM. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now we already know within a ROM chip, there is a decoder circuit and a ROM matrix. And during the session of introduction to primary memory, we embedded the half adder logic, that is, the carry and the sum functions within a ROM circuit. Let's reconsider this circuit. I would like to reintroduce the architecture of this particular circuit from a different perspective this time. Now, if you all remember, whenever we have discussed this circuit, we considered it to be just a means of representing Boolean functions through these vertical connections. And these horizontal connections are the mean terms. Observe, in the carry functions SOP, the mean term 3 is there. And that's why the vertical connection of the carry function has the link with the horizontal connection M3. Now in sums SOP, we have the mean terms 1 and 2. And that's the reason why the connection of sum has the links with the decoder output lines M1 and M2. Now, instead of observing the circuit with respect to carry and sum, let's examine it with respect to the decoder's output lines. That is, these horizontal connections. Now observe, for M0, there are no links with either carry or sum. Therefore, we can think of M0 as two memory cells having zeros in them. Coming to M1, we have no link with this connection of carry, but we have a link with this vertical connection of sum. So we can think of it as two memory cells having zero in the first one and one in the second cell. Now M2 has similar situation as M1, so we can think of it as two cells having 0 and 1 respectively. Finally, M3 will represent 1, 0 as it has a link with the first connection but not with the vertical connection of sum. So, instead of these horizontal and vertical connections, we can think of the circuit as a storage unit that stores 0, 0 in M0 and similarly, stores 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 0 in M1, M2 and M3 respectively. Now, if you remember, during the discussion of direct memory mapping, we learned that the smallest addressable unit of memory is called word. Now, according to our new perspective, M0 is storing 2 bits, that is 0, 0. M1 is storing 2 bits, that is 0, 1. Similarly, M2 is also storing two more bits, 0, 1. And finally, M3 also has two bits, that is 1, 0. So we can say for this circuit, M0 to M3, these all are addresses. And it can also be proved. Notice this, if we feed 1, 1 through A and B, due to the input 1, 1, the output line O3 of this decoder will be activated and we will be able to access the stored information that is 1, 0 from that address. So, in this circuit, okay, let's do one thing. Since we just have seen that we can actually store things in here, from now onwards, we will call it memory. So, in this memory unit, every address stores two bits. Hence, we deduce for this memory unit, one word is of two bits. Because two bits is the smallest addressable memory in this memory unit. And four such words are there. Hence, four multiplied by two bits gives us eight bits. So, eight bits can be stored in this ROM chip. Now, let's consider a 2 to 4 decoder with 8 vertical connections. And we all know, initially, all the links will be connected. Now, from our newly gained perspective, we can say, this is a memory unit 
which looks kinda like this. Also, since initially all the links remain connected, hence all these cells will have ones in them. Now notice, each of these are of 8 bits. Output line O0 represents the first 8 bits. Similarly, O1, O2 and O3 represent the second, third and the fourth group of 8 bits respectively. So basically, there are 4 addresses. Now there are 4 addresses and each one stores one word. Now in this particular memory, the smallest addressable unit is of 8 bits. Therefore, it can store 4 multiplied by 8, that is 32 bits. Now let me show you all the procedure of address expansion of ROM chips. What we will do? We will take two of these memory chips and thereafter we will apply the logic of decoder expansion. So our objective is to create a memory unit with these, where the first address will hold these 8 bits and using the last address, we will be able to access these 8 bits. So what we will do? We will first create common connections for the input lines I1 and I0. Now the tricky part is, handling the enable input lines. To the viewers, it is my strong recommendation that please watch the videos of Architecture of ROM Part 2 and 3 in order to understand this circuit clearly. Now in the first decoder, we will feed the input to the enable line through a NOT get, whereas for the second decoder, the input will be given as it is. So this white input line will represent the most significant bit of the input and this YOLO input line will represent the least significant bit of the input sequence. Now if we feed one through this most significant input bit, this inverter will turn it to zero which will disable this decoder. Whereas since the original input was one, the second decoder will be enabled so that we will be able to access any of these addresses. Now on the contrary, if we feed 0, the NOT get will turn that into 1, enabling this decoder in that process, which will allow us to access any of these addresses. Nevertheless, since the original input is 0, this decoder will remain disabled. Now the address range for this decoder is 0 to 3 and for this decoder, it's 4 to 7. And why so? It's pretty basic. With three input lines, there are eight addresses possible, right? Starting from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, till 1, 1, 1. Now we have just seen this decoder gets enabled when we feed 0 through the most significant bit of the input sequence, which is true for 0, 0, 0, that is 0, 0, 0, 1, that is 1, 0, 1, 0, that is 2, and 0, 1, 1, that is 3. On the other hand, this decoder gets enabled if we feed 1 through the most significant bit of the input sequence, thus, the addresses for this decoder will be 100 that is 4, 101 that is 5, 110 or 6, and 111 or 7. So altogether, in this memory, we have 8 addresses, and clearly the word size is 8 bits. So this entire memory can store 64 bits. Now notice that using two ROM chips of 4 addresses, Applying the logic that we acquired from decoder's expansion procedure, we created a bigger memory unit with more addresses. This is called address expansion of ROM. Now similar to this one, there is another phenomenon called word expansion of ROMs. So now what we will do? We will take the same two ROMs, but this time we won't increase the number of addresses, rather we will try and increase the word size. Individually, these ROMs have the word size of 8 bits. 
right? Also, they have four addresses. So now, the number of addresses will remain the same, that is four. And for this, we will feed common inputs to both the input lines of both the decoders. Now, if we also give common input to both the decoders enable lines and feed one through it, in that case, both the decoders will be enabled together. Now observe, if we feed 0, 0 through the input lines, both the decoders O0 output lines will be activated and using a single address 00, 0 we will be able to access these two 8 bits, that is 16 bits altogether. Similarly, if we feed 0, 01, O1 one of both the decoders will be activated and again we will be able to access 16 bits, 8 plus 8. Then again for the input 10, both the decoders O2 outputs will be activated, giving us the access to 16 more bits. Finally, for 1, 1, the output lines O3 will be activated and we will access 16 more bits. So basically, we will have four addresses and one word in this particular circuit is 16 bits. So in total, 64 bits can be stored in this particular circuit. However, for this one, the word size has been increased to 16 bits. So for expansion of word, all we have to do is connect all the enable lines and feed one through that. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concepts of address and word expansion of ROM are now clear to you. The next session will be dedicated for some numerical problems. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.